Shift 4 payments on Wednesday went down over 12%, went back under $100, but right now, before the market opens on Thursday, it's already back above $100. What basically happened was that Donald Trump did nominate and pick the CEO of Shift 4, Jared Isaacman, to run NASA. And so the stock market panicked, sold off the stock because they thought, well, if the CEO and the founder is going to leave the company, not right away, it's going to leave the company early 2025, then maybe the future of this company is not as bright as previously thought. Now, is that true? Or is this a buying opportunity? Let's discuss in this video. Me personally, right now, I have no shares in Shift4, but I've been following this company for quite a while, and I've been following Jared for quite a while as well, since I like space, he likes space, and now, well, it seems like he's going to run NASA. So quite a journey, quite a journey. Anyways, let's discuss that. If you enjoy this type of videos, hit all the buttons. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and end up in comments with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So quick overview of this stock and company. This is a company with a market cap of 9.29 billion dollars, a forward PE of 23.1 times. Year to date, the stock is still up 34.4%. Year over year, the stock is up 50%, so quite a good performance. If you look at what the analysts expect this company to do in the coming fiscal years, I mean, it's worth paying that forward PE, right? This is a fast-growing company that's also quite profitable. Right now, if we look at the average analyst price target, that sits, well, 16% higher than the price we're at right now. Of course, that's after the big hit on Wednesday. If we look at some pricing metrics, forward PE, EV to EBITDA price to sales, forward PE and EV to EBITDA, we are lower than the four year mean here. Price to sales is about the same, 1.7 times, definitely not expensive. If we look at price to free cash flow, 19.4 times, although that one is in the last 12 months. And then if we look at price earnings to growth, we're now back under one, under one in my books is undervalued. And so what happened was basically this. On Wednesday, Donald Trump tweeted out or actually posted on Truth Social, I'm delighted to nominate Jared Isaacman, an accomplished business leader, philanthropist, pilot and astronaut as administrator of the NASA. Jared will drive NASA's mission of discovery and inspiration, paving the way for groundbreaking achievements in space science, technology and exploration. Over the past 25 years, as the founder and CEO of Shift4, Jared has demonstrated exceptional leadership, building a trailblazing global financial technology company. He also co-founded and served as CEO of Dragon International, a defense aerospace company for over a decade, supporting the US Department of Defense and our allies. Jared's passion for space, astronaut experience, and dedication to pushing the boundaries of exploration, unlocking the mysteries of the universe, and advancing the new space economy make him ideally suited to lead NASA into a bold new era. Congratulations to Jared, his wife Monica and their children. I mean, to be honest, this came out of nowhere, but I think he's the perfect person to lead NASA into the next space age. To which, of course, the Shift4 family, the Shift4 shareholders and employees got this letter yesterday. After nearly 26 years leading Shift4, the time has come for me to embark on a new journey. I was nominated to lead NASA, a role that reflects my passion for advancing humankind's reach among the stars, unlocking the secrets of the universe, and improving life on Earth along the way. I'll skip some things here. He says, I'm proud to say Shift4's leadership has never been stronger. Taylor Lauber has been at the heart of our evolution, leading our IPO and strategy and navigating the opportunities and challenges of being a public company. I'm confident that Taylor and the team will continue to execute our ambitious growth plans with precision and passion. I intend to remain CEO until my confirmation and will be fully engaged at our investor day in February, where we will share our vision to deliver profitable growth well into the future. I also plan to retain the majority of my equity interest in Shift4, subject to ethics obligations, and will move quickly to reduce my voting power to be commensurate with other Class A shareholders. While I can envision a future where I return, I know the company is in great hands. Shift4 has been my life's work since I was 16 years old, but this is my time to serve and give back to the nation that enabled me to live the American dream. So, yeah, I mean, I can understand the mixed feelings that some shareholders might have right now, but I do believe that if he's making this choice, I don't think he will leave 
shift four in well hands of people that are not capable of making sure that shift four is going to be a success in the future. On the other side, you already have a couple of analysts that are saying that, well, shift four will just become an acquisition target in the coming years, which to be honest, if it stays around $10 billion, $15 billion of our market cap, I could see that happening. Of course, when you get acquired, you're probably going to get a small premium. So probably going to be around $20 billion or so if that happens in the next, let's say, two, three years, because this is a fast growing company, a profitable one as well. So could make sense. Who's going to acquire it? I don't know, but that's basically the play now, in my opinion. We're going to touch on a couple of numbers in just a second, but if it does get acquired, then you're going to get a premium because I think at $100, you're going to get more than $100 per share. Then if you don't get acquired, I still think that this company, despite Jared leaving, I think this company has already a roadmap for the next, probably for the next couple of years. And I don't think that him leaving is going to change that. Now, what happens in the next 10, 15 years? I don't know. But in the next five years, I think this company will continue to do what it has done before. And let's grow, grow in a profitable way, take more market shares, make smart acquisition as well. And so zooming out a little bit, we know already what the expected growth for revenue is going to be since we've seen that at the start of this video. Now we can also look at free cash flow. So free cash flow in the last 12 months sits at $361.3 million. For the fiscal year 2024, it's expected to increase 28.9% compared to fiscal 2023, and then still grow quite quickly in the next two fiscal years. Zooming out a little bit, we can see that total revenue since 2019 has increased by 330%. Of course, previously net income free cash flow was negative, especially in 2021, pandemic, but since then it has grown quite nicely. And then another very, very impressive metric here is of course end-to-end -end payment volume that has increased by 573.3% since 2019. I mean, look at that jump. It's amazing. And that still continues to grow quite rapidly. Overall, last quarter, these were the numbers. So end-to-end -end payment volumes increased 56% year over year. Gross profit is up 48% year over year. Gross revenue, less network fees. That's up 50%. Net income was $72.2 million. And adjusted EBITDA was up 51% to $187.4 million. The company is also moving up market, so the average size of merchant based on volume is up 163% of the 2022 levels. I mean, this company has shown, I highly suggest you go over the shareholder deck that they release, or maybe even the investor one, but probably you're going to get a better update in February. But this company is growing in multiple categories, restaurants, hotels, casinos, sports teams, events gaming and all of that. They're making strategic investments as well, acquisitions to grow the overall portfolio and to grow the reach of Shift4. They're doing so and they're doing so in a profitable way, which not a lot of companies have done in recent years, especially not in the payment segment. So yeah, I, I find it very, very hard to believe that suddenly just because he's going to leave that the business will suddenly turn into a bad one. It's true that he is the founder, he's the visionary, he's the, the CEO. So yeah, it does hurt a little bit. But but I still think that, well, it was an overreaction on Wednesday. For you that have bought the dip, I think you did so because you agree that the company did not really change other than the fact that the CEO is going to leave in February. In the future, of course, two, three, four years from now, if it's true that things don't work out for the company because he's not here anymore, then you're probably already going to see those signs, right? In earnings calls, in commentaries here and there, you're probably going to see and feel it. Until then, I don't think there is reason to panic. Last thing here is the reverse DCF. So we plug in the trailing 12 months free cash flow, $361 million, the terminal growth rate, the discount rate. And so to justify today's price, or should I say, yesterday's closing price, free cash flow has to grow by 6.2% over the next 10 years. This also includes a 2% dilution, which in my opinion is quite okay. We've seen that it's expected to grow quite faster than that, fiscal 24, 25, and 26. So even, let's say even, we don't even go to the double digits, we say 9%. 
then this thing should be valued at 25% higher than it is today. Now, of course, you can add some execution risk because the CEO is leaving, etc., etc. But I do think that 9% compared to what we've seen is already quite conservative, especially for, for this type of company. But then again, it's really up to you how you want to view this type of things. Overall, I still think that not much has changed. I mean, the doomsday scenario is definitely not around the corner. Last thing here, if we look at the stock, we can see that it is now right at the previous resistance, which was back here in 2021. Let's see if this time the previous resistance does become a support area. It's also well under the 20 day moving average. The 50 day one sits at $97 and the 200 day one at $81.15. RSI previously was overbought a week ago. Right now, well, clearly that's not the case. Still high, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see if $100 or so is now going to be a support area. So overall, that's about it. I'm not a shareholder in Shift4. If I was a shareholder, I would have probably bought the dip or I would probably still buy the dip right now because, well, essentially nothing really has changed much for the business other than the CEO leaving, which, yes, of course, is an impact, but I don't think it's as bad as what the market showed it could be, right? And yes, I do believe that it could become an acquisition target in the coming years, especially if it does stay under $20 billion in market cap. So yeah, that's basically my thoughts behind this. Do share yours down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, do all of that. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.